Jason from Meghead Studios, quick update on the dungeon tiles. These dungeon tiles were made out of pink foam. I followed a tutorial by Black Magicraft. You can find his videos on YouTube. I've posted a link in the previous video. I'll probably post one again here just because they're great tutorials. So basically, let me show you what it, what happened. This is the end result. I've dry brushed it. Um, this was a pool that my daughter wanted to make. So we did that. We followed his tutorial. Uh, Use regular clear nail polish hardening. Hardening fluid on here. Um, basically, I ended up using the whole bottle. You know, it's a small bottle like this. You know, maybe your female friends would know about this. Ladies, you definitely know what this stuff is. Um, so yeah, it basically eats away everything, as you can see. Um, it doesn't eat it uniform. I tried to brush it on. It didn't quite work. So I just basically poured it right in the middle and just kept pushing, 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 spreading it around the way I wanted until you ended up with this. It does leave it nice and glossy, even after paint. There's some texture in here, as you can see, like little pitting. I think it just adds it adds to it. So once I do my painting and add the clear resin, it should be good. Still debating on whether or not I want to add like a stone pillar or something in the center. Who knows? Um, this one, again, not a pink foam. Made sure that everything is one inch around. As always, I'm using my GW Orcs because I don't have anything else really painted up anymore because I've sold most of it. Got rid of it. So yeah, that works. Um, the rest of the grids, as you can see, uh, this is a, I know this is by Reaper. I can't remember if it's Chronoscope or if it is from the Pathfinder line. I'm not sure. Anyway, he's got to get worked on. He's going to be really detailed. Um, another GW Orc. Tried a different dry brush technique with that. This is a 6x6 six six tile. This works great as a large room. I actually have a 20 by 12 tile that I'm working on now for a super large room. Yeah, just one inch grids. And let me show you the tools that I used for it. They really don't differ too much from the ones shown in his tutorial videos. But, you know, all the information you want, I'll try to give it to you. So basically, these are the Apple Barrel craft paints. Some of us in the hobby call these the really cheap crappy paints. For this project, they are excellent and well worth the value. This large bottle of black, which was the base coat, is uh, $1.50. These smaller bottles each are $0.50 cents a piece. At least they are in my area. Uh, what I started out for basing it was with the black, uh, thin down 50-50 mix, just so I could get that nice black color inside the recesses of all these tiles. Then I went back with a 90% paint, 10% water mix to give it another base coat. Came out really really nice then i went on I and of course i allowed 24 hours for it to dry because i was working um so the next day i went ahead and used the dark gray don't worry if it says it's gloss it won't matter in the end anyway um so i used the gloss dark gray because that's all they had painted it up still was really really dark i know you can't really tell but it was really really dark then for the highlights i did use Timeless Gray. Um, timeless Gray gave it more of a stone effect. I did try, and here's the thing, I did try the Dolphin Gray. It's really, really light. It's almost like a ghost type gray. Um, it ended up being too light. I didn't like it for my taste. You may like it for your taste, but for me, it just wasn't It wasn't working. It wasn't doing it. I may use this for the cathedral since it's outside and, you know, sun bleach. So this is probably a good alternative for that. Again, these are 50 cents for these little bottles. Not, you know, it doesn't really break your bank. You know, you get a lot of use out of it. For instance, uh, where is it? This is about 75% used over 40 tiles. And these, maybe 50%. That's about it. Yeah, like 50% used over 40 tiles. Okay, um... Also, he mentioned using this stuff, Minwax Fast Dry and Polyurethane, Clear Satin. It works. It does not melt the foam at all, period. So definitely pick this up. This bottle ends up cost is $7.49 for a bottle. Um, his had a clear cap. Mine has a black one, so that may be just something, you know, regional type thing or maybe, you know, who knows. But anyway, yeah, this is definitely worth it. Um... Over the years of doing cosplay and other foam projects, um, you know, aerosol cans will eat through foam 
regardless of what type of foam it is this doesn't so I may be looking to use this for more type of armor purposes and whatnot maybe for next year when I finally get back into the cosplay um, another thing I want to mention to make the lines it mentions using a ballpoint pen such as this so once you make your cuts you just drag this down to give it a nice bevel edge because of this what I've learned is that your tip of your pen can and will come out spilling ink everywhere this tip will end up being embedded somewhere in one of these recesses it sucks trying to get it out you'll get ink all over your hands all over your project which isn't a bad thing on the project all over your hands might be another story but if you act quick enough you of course can wash it off so yeah just be prepared for that that's gonna happen um, the next thing I want to recommend is this ruler. Now this is my wife's ruler. She uses it for her sewing projects. It's uh, by Easy Quilting, West Warren Mass, easyquilt.com. Why I recommend this for this type of project. Now if you're going to do something with a one inch grid, this ruler is exactly two inches across. Okay, It's 18 inches long. And you see there's a nice black line right here in the middle. That marks exactly where the one inch mark is, right in the middle of it. So, I do apologize for the quality of the video and the shaking. I'm trying to do this real quick because my kids are trying to play Xbox here. So as you can see, let's say for instance this is your edge. There you go. There's your next line. So just line it up with your, with your first line. There's your next line. Line it up with the second line. There's your next line. And so on and so forth. This thing is invaluable. It saved me so much time. I'm glad my wife had it. Because I was using a metal ruler. And it's about an inch across. I'm not sure. But for some reason the lines just weren't coming out correctly. Um, it could just be me. You know, I admit that. I am not infallible. But yeah, if you can, and I don't know how much this is, we've had this for about seven years, seven or eight years. Um, but if you can find one of these, it's called a draft and cut, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a seamstress. My wife is. Um, definitely pick this up. It's worth it. You know, for this type of project, it is definitely worth it. And I'm sure you can use it for any other project as well. You know, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, all this stuff is sealed. The only thing left is to get the clear resin for this. Well, paint this up a little bit. Some blues, uh, purple. I also got some um, some stuff for like algae and lichen inside of it. Or lichen, however you want to pronounce it. You know, we had a game argument about that one time. Um, and then that should be done. Still not sure if I want to put a stone pillar in the middle for some type of deity. I probably won't. My daughter likes it. This is her little project. So, yeah, that works. Alright guys, take it easy, have a good evening, and keep on crafting y'all. Later.